Alright guys, so I think I've figured out what to do and where the damn reserve is at. It's actually here. I'm just a dumbass, but first and foremost, uh, let's check out that phonograph recording real quick. Number... I can only take number 320. Cylinder records. Huh? Here it is. Just to make sure that we've got a good idea of what all went on here. Mm-hmm. Use number 320 if you would. These plants, classified as shrubs or grasses, have adapted to their arid environment due to a system of underground roots. This recording seems very long. It is unnecessary to listen to all of it. Miss White was in the laboratory, as she told us. Okay. Alright, but... Let's get to the heart of the matter here. The reserves... I'm not mistaken, should just be like... God, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm so stupid. Let's see now. Anything in your pockets? Oh, go on. Holmes, his left shoe is unique. This anomaly is often a characteristic of... A club foot. Bravo, Watson. That is the key element of this case. What? Okay. Oh, hello. Martin Amish just regret life has become a living hell. I find it unbearable. Doesn't deserve to die, but I cannot forgive myself for having his blood upon my hands. We Hamishes seem to have always fallen victim to our circumstance, and I find myself to be no exception. I must atone, and I shall do so here and now. Farewell. Hmm. Anyone else? The mark around the neck is very visible. He died instantly. Okay. we have here? Okay, what is this? Hamish acted alone. Here we go. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Martin Hamish was able to run due to the tibial torsion on his club foot. Therefore, we should find out if he had sufficient time to lock the door of the colonial collection room and activate the ventilation system. Did he have an accomplice? Okay, there we go. Talk to Lestrade. So this will discuss with Lestrade the possible impact of new clues found on the body of Martin Hamish. Sure. Why not? Let's talk. Let's do it, Lestrade. Something about this rings very oddly. Why do you say that, Mr. Holmes? Why? Because of Mr. Hamish's club foot. Oh, I deserve to be kicked from here to Charing Cross. I should have noticed it. But, Mr. Holmes, I can't see why. No, I don't suppose you do. You must recall that Mr. Dunn was locked inside the Colonial Collection Room by the murderer. If it was Mr. Hamish, he would have had to run up to his workplace to trigger the fan situated above it, taking into consideration the condition of his foot. Well, it is still possible. Perhaps, but it is rather strange that such a person as Mr. Hamish decided to base his plan on the speed of his gait. You mean to say that somebody helped him? So the suicide is questionable? Correct. Mr. Hamish accuses only himself in his letter, and so the investigation stops. Possibly an accomplice, then? That idea had not occurred to me, Mr. Holmes. I have another idea, Inspector. Thanks to the testimony that we have collected, we are able to rebuild the events as they took place that day. With a timeline, such as we did in the Jack the Ripper case. Precisely. The map at the entrance of Kew Gardens should help us with our timeline. All right. Let's do it. Let us analyze the facts Whoa. and statements so that we may recreate the events of that morning. Okay. Martin Hamish Mon wait, Martin Hamish Monty Dunn went to meet Albert in the scene house. Uh okay, I need to find the earliest time, and that would be 9.30. Okay, why are some green and 
Okay, so you done with me, Albert? Okay. It was at around 20 minutes to 10, so 9.40, when Hamish and Monica Dunn went out to the backyard. After 10 minutes, Dunn recommended his, his inspection enter the dry tropics room. Hamish returned to the seed house. Hamish returns to the seed house. Okay, Monty and Dunn, Hamish go yard. Oh, you know what? How about we do that? Okay. Um, let's see. He's there at 9.50. Um, Martin Havish had a conversation with Miss White at 10 o'clock. Oh, wait. Miss White was in the laboratory until 10.40. Saw Hamish and Albert in the water lily greenhouse and joined them there. So I saw Mark Hamish in the laboratory. At ten forty? Okay. Huh. Hamish ran to Albert as soon as he observed that Monty Dunn was unwell, which is around 10.30. Okay. Albert was in the seat house in the morning. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, oh, crap. Go. Go back. Albert was in the seat house the entire morning. He observed Hamish returning from visiting Miss White at ten past ten. Ten past ten. Our Hamish returns after talking with Miss White. I guess. Okay. Let us summarize. Montague Dunn was poisoned inside the colonial collection room. He forced open the door, which means that someone locked him inside there at 10.20. Martin Hamish was last seen at 10.10. .10. This means that he has approximately 10 minutes to lock the door of the colonial collection room. Given that he was club-footed, it is doubtful. Albert also has 10 minutes to lock the door of the Colonial Collection Room, which is quite enough time. Miss White was last seen at 10 o'clock, which means that she had approximately 20 minutes to lock the door. More than enough time. Okay. Perfect, Watson. Now, let us ascertain who assisted Martin Hamish in killing Montague Dunn. Uh, it's pretty simple. Okay. So that. Uh, let's do this. There you go. Okay. Albert's not involved. Martin Hamish and Albert are not accomplices. It is unlikely that Albert would have had the opportunity. In 10 minutes, would not have been enough to lock the door. Okay. Albert had time. Albert was Martin Hamish's accomplice. 10 minutes would have been enough time for him to fall in multi down and lock the door. Don't believe that for a moment. White had time. Miss White had 20 minutes. It would have been more than enough time. Really, trap once you done. Locked the door and alerted Hamish and activated the ventilation system. White's not involved. Uh, not accomplices. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, no. It's her. It's, it's her. White is an accomplice. There we go. Mark White and Martin Hamish... His accomplices in killing Montague Dunn, her professional ambition and personal situation have been damaged uh, by the breakup with Dunn. Condemn Miss White. Miss White is a dangerous woman and very capable of carrying out an elaborate murder for mon monetary gains. She flirted with Dunn's son, Albert, and later pushed Martin Hamish into suicide. She deserves the rope or absolver. 
this uh, white is a desperate woman in debt, resigned to consorting with wealthy gentlemen. Uh, when Dunn cast her aside, she killed him in desperation. Hamish tried to save her. She deserves. No, she does not. He fucking killed a dude and planned it out and all that shit. Um. Yeah, no, I'm. No, condemned. Fuck it. Like the other one, I get that was more or less like the very first one. I can see that more as kind of an accident. Especially since the guy was drunk and more than likely very belligerent. But. No. As for all of these, a lot of these are just cold blooded killers. I don't like it. And obviously, the murder was premeditated in almost all of these, too, unlike the first. But, Holmes. How can you be certain that we'll find Miss White here? It is obvious, Watson. Just use your brain. I am using it. I do use it. Now that the rope has tightened around Martin Hamish, Miss White must act to erase all traces of her implication. After the suicide of her accomplice, there is one final trace remaining. The deadly plants of the Divine Syndicate. She will be there. Very good. Shall we go? Just one moment. Now listen to me, Watson. I shall see her alone. You will conceal yourself behind her. Quietly. Whatever are you planning? Nothing spectacular. The impulses of women have always been a mystery to me. But she is a bold one, and so we must be cautious. All right. You can count on me, Holmes. Let's get her. Do this. Mr. Holmes, good day to you. You do not seem surprised, Miss White. Well, I was expecting you. Uh-oh. Not for too long, I believe. So please tell me, as it is still unclear, who planned the murder? Was it you? You were wrong, Mr. Holmes. It was Martin Hamish, then. You managed to convince him to take on a more prominent role. <laughs> you could not be further from the truth. You think that you can fool me? You don't care what I think. It is difficult to care about someone who is capable of pushing a man to his suicide. It is over, Miss White. The police will be here any minute. Over? Perhaps. One moment you were here, and the next, you were on the other side. The other side? No! Stop! Oh, what? Uh, um... Ah. I beg you not to do this, Miss White. Oh, crap. Don't come any closer. Oh, shit. She's got poison. Please remain calm. We can help you. Not one step further. Don't try to... Watson! Now would be a good time. Stop this foolishness. You cannot truly want to die. No, it's too late. Yeah! Spam! Good job, Watson. Good slap. Well done, Watson. She was not faking. Miss White, you have no right to take your own life. Dr. Watson? Did you just save me? Or worse? Let's see. Key guard Sharma, Miss White is a sexual woman, very capable of carrying out an elaborate murder. When she realized that she was able, unable to make any further monetary gain from Montague Dunn, she advanced her affections to Albert, his son. She was the one who'd locked the door of the colonial collection room directly after Hamish released the caterpillars and then pushed Martin Hamish to a suicide only to cover herself. She got what she deserved. Clues found 22. White is an accomplice. Let's find out. Nailed it! Yep, and I'm good with that. I'm impartial. That, I guess I am. Half Moonwalk. Deadly Flower. 
No shit, Dudley. Damn. Yeah, well, that one wasn't too bad. I feel really bad for the sun, though. I mean, shit. That sucks. And he's got no help, no idea how to manage those plants. Yikes. Hell for him. But, alas, I do not have any murders about. Where are you going, Holmes? Have you been invited somewhere? We have been invited, Watson. We have? Where to? To the Baker Street Irregulars annual dinner. They sent us an invitation. It is on the table. A dinner? How could those street urchins afford anything like that? I can't understand your interest in them, Holmes. They're dirty. They wouldn't hesitate to steal your wallet. They... Watson, you should be excited. It is a secret dinner. Its location changes every year. Read the menu. Sounds mouth-watering. All right. We, the secret police of Baker Street, invite you, Sherlock Holmes, and Dr. Watson to our annual dinner. Menu, entree, frozen rat head salad. Is, is this a joke? Not at all. Pray continue. Main course, sow's udder in Danny <laughs> Nutcracker's way. Ew. Ah, sounds disgusting, Holmes. Hedgehog goulash. Street turnips in homemade juice. And it goes on. Ah, I can hear them on the stairs now. Well, we can't go there. We can't eat that. Watson, you'll hurt the feelings of those poor children. We have to go. Oh, Mr. Holmes. It is fine, Mrs. Hudson. Mr. Holmes. Wiggins, Dr. Watson is getting ready. He will be delighted to join us. You don't look well, my young man. Is there something wrong? Don't tell me the dinner is cancelled. Mr. Holmes, it's my brother, Leighton. He's in a prison cell. They say he's killed two men. You have to help us, Mr. Holmes, because I know he didn't do it. Where is he now? From what I've heard, they took him to the yard, and they gave him a good beating already. Oh. You know what they're like. They'll hang him. They won't look any further. Holmes, we have to help him. Well, and forget about the dinner. Wiggins, I'll take the case. You're fantastic, Mr. Holmes. I'll be waiting for you at the crime scene. You'll be there, right? It's on Half Moon Street in Whitechapel. Very well. Oh, lovely. Now, hold on a moment. Let's see, what did we get this time? Oh, the plant. Deadly plant from Kew Gardens. Oh, lovely. Toby, how the hell are you? Pet the dog. Toby. All you need now is a shawl and a mock Whoop. cap, and you could be Mrs. Hudson's younger sister. Oh, dear. Well, hello there again, lady. This will be the final time we look at each other. Goodbye. Holmes, poor little Wiggins needs our help. And it, it, our, our help he shall have. There we go. I'm trying to say that. What do we have here? The time sensation exotic method of murder. The arsenal of our present day criminals may soon be rifled, oh, I'm sorry, refilled with poisonous plants. A young and beautiful woman, in collaboration with her colleague at Kew Gardens, planned the terrible murder of the director, Mr. Montague Dunn. Only one detective was capable of uncovering the truth behind a tragedy that was initially believed to be a simple heart attack. That detective's name? Sherlock Holmes. God damn right it is. Alrighty, guys, but I think we're going to call it here for now. Um, we had a good little session, got through a couple cases. You know, one, unfortunately, that was far too easy. Uh, and then this one here, which, you know, proved to be a lot of fun. And now we're on the final case. I'm sure, I'm hoping it'll be, you know, exciting, fun, and hopefully challenging, too. But we'll have to find out later. Until then, I will catch you in the next one, my minnows. Thank you so much for watching as always, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Alright, I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.